President Obama addressed the nation with a plan to destroy the so-called Islamic State, a group that's terrorized civilians in Syria and Iraq. But the shocking videos of two American journalists being beheaded raise new questions about the threat they pose to the American homeland. And now the president is preparing to take action. I'm joined now by ABC's chief White House correspondent, John Carl, with all the details. Good evening, Dan. Two weeks after the president said that he didn't have a strategy for taking on ISIS in Syria, he sought to reassure the American public that he does have a plan, a comprehensive plan for taking on what many in his administration call the greatest terrorist threat since 9-11. My fellow Americans. It was a remarkable moment for a reluctant warrior. Tonight, with a new Iraqi government in place and following consultations with allies abroad and Congress at home, I can announce that America will lead a broad coalition to roll back this terrorist threat. On the eve of 9-11, President Obama announcing a new offensive on Islamic extremists in Iraq and in Syria. Our objective is clear. We will degrade and ultimately destroy ISIL through a comprehensive and sustained counterterrorism strategy. Key elements of the president's plan include sending 475 more U.S. troops to Iraq to train and advise the Iraqi security forces, bringing the total number of U.S. military personnel in Iraq to more than 1,600, expanding U.S. airstrikes in Iraq, training moderate rebels fighting ISIS in Syria, and in the biggest escalation, White House officials say the president has decided to launch airstrikes on ISIS safe havens in Syria, although they won't say when. I've made it clear that we will hunt down terrorists who threaten our country wherever they are. If you threaten America, you will find no safe haven. U.S. officials say ISIS is the biggest terror threat since 9-11, what the Homeland Security Secretary today called a group of, quote, depraved criminals, rapists, kidnappers, and killers. In Iraq, ISIS controls one-third of the country, stretching deep into northern Syria, where they've spread fear with a sophisticated social media campaign. ISIL is a terrorist organization, pure and simple, and it has no vision other than the slaughter of all who stand in its way. In a region that has known so much bloodshed, these terrorists are unique in their brutality. They execute captured prisoners. The videotaped executions of two American journalists in Syria stirred public opinion, ramping up pressure on President Obama to take stronger action against their killers. In acts of barbarism, they took the lives of two American journalists, Jim Foley and Stephen Sotloff. If le left unchecked, these terrorists could pose a growing threat beyond that region, including to the United States. In the latest ABC News Washington Post poll, 65% of Americans support airstrikes against ISIS in Syria, with 91% seeing ISIS as a serious threat to U.S. vital interests. The president tonight sought to project a resolute and reassuring image after weeks of muddled and contradictory statements. I don't want to put the cart before the horse. We don't have a strategy Yet. Exactly one year after ruling out an extended air campaign in Syria. I will not pursue a prolonged air campaign like Libya or Kosovo. The president may be on the verge of starting one. This counterterrorism campaign will be waged through a steady, relentless effort to take out ISIL wherever they exist using our air power and our support for partners, forces on the ground. The president vowed the new war will involve no U.S. combat boots on the ground in Iraq or Syria. A message Secretary of State John Kerry delivered personally today in Baghdad. The President of the United States and other leaders of other countries have, have eliminated the notion of their forces uh, being engaged in direct combat. Still, the number of U.S. troops in Iraq has been quietly rising. They may not be combat forces, but they face combat danger. Just last week, there was reported gunfire aimed at the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad. Republicans have criticized the president's posture towards the threat as too cautious. And President Obama seems willfully blind to one of the key facts about the post-9-11 security apparatus. It is not self-sustaining. Congress could vote as soon as next week on whether to authorize U.S. military training of Syrian rebels in the fight against ISIS, a fight the White House says could last for years. For Nightline, I'm Jonathan Carl at the White House. The president's speech would seem to elevate the stakes even further for any other American captives being held by the terror group. 
ABC's chief investigative correspondent Brian Ross joins us now. Brian, what can you tell us about what this may mean for them and for the American homeland? Well, Dan, without a doubt, the turning point for the U.S. in dealing with ISIS came after those videos of two American journalists being brutally executed. There are at least two other Americans and three Westerners still being held, and their fate tonight is in serious doubt. The search for the two remaining American hostages did take on greater urgency tonight with the president's speech. But given what has already happened to James Foley and Stephen Sotloff, people in the intelligence community say the reality is grim. I think the United States has to realize that the probability is anyone held by ISIS is going to be killed in response to stepped-up American attacks. Now the effort to track the identities and movements of the masked man seen on camera and others off camera will get added resources. The full weight of the United States military and the full weight of the United States intelligence community is now going to be targeted at ISIS. And, uh, the way the every video, every online message from ISIS and its recruits is now being closely examined. So here, if we go in a hit, this is the room where the Mohirin sleep. Among the videos being reviewed is this online post from earlier this year by a group of British ISIS members showing off the place where they lived in Syria. Everyone has their own designated space. Obviously, sometimes brothers get messy. Sometimes, you know, uh, things get turned upside down. The video shows cell phones plugged in and the area where the British-accented narrator says they produced the group's propaganda. Now this is where most of the uh, media work happens on this little desk here. Today, the British ISIS members posted this ominous message of a new video coming tomorrow, September 11th. Do not stop me from martyrdom, for it will be the celebration of my new life. With the fateful anniversary date now, American law enforcement officials today warned of the threat from ISIS recruits coming back to the U.S. New York Police Commissioner William Bratton. ISIS creates a totally new area of threat for us and one that is probably even more potentially impactful on us than Al-Qaeda. And Commissioner Bratton pointed to the power of the ISIS propaganda videos being produced to recruit new members. Their ability to inspire not only those who will go there to fight and then potentially come back, but also to inspire the so-called lone wolves, the disaffected, sitting in their basements, pouring over their commuter, computer terminals. They have an incredible ability to influence those young men and women. And this 19-year-old nurse's aide from Denver, Shannon Conley, is one of the young women who apparently fell for it. Federal prosecutors say she was lured into becoming the bride of a 32-year-old ISIS fighter in Syria, a recent Muslim convert. Conley said she had found a kindred spirit and began training in military tactics and weapons. It was only after members of this Denver church tipped off the FBI that the government moved in to stop her from flying off to Syria. Today in federal court in Denver, Conley pleaded guilty to conspiracy with her lawyer, Robert Pepin, saying she had been led terribly astray using her Muslim name, Halima. Like all of us, Halima has been horrified to learn of the slaughter and oppression at the hands of the people controlling ISIS. It was never her vision to have any role in any of that. Halima is fully aware that the fact that she was arrested may very well have saved her. But the greater concern is of the American recruits who were not caught in time. I think the fear in the White House tonight has to be that the president announces something against ISIS tonight and there's an attack tomorrow. The truth would be, however, that ISIS was going after us anyway and has been planning that for a long time. The U.S. says it has no information of any imminent attack by ISIS or any other group. But as it has been for the last 13 years, September 11th will again be a day of great anxiety. Brian Ross, ABC News, New York.